So as you already know, this is uh, about how to get started with content marketing in, in, in WordPress. So let me just start by asking you a simple question. Have you bought anything online without uh, reading or watching any video on it? I presume you haven't. So what you do, if you want to buy something online, you, uh, you read something on it on, on any website, maybe on Facebook, or watch a video. So this is how actually things go on uh, when you actually want to buy something online. So this is where the content marketing actually uh, comes in. So uh, with that being said, let me, uh, let me just say how, what content marketing really is. Uh, in a professional uh, word, I can say that content marketing is, a, is creating valuable and relevant content to attract uh, audience in your niche to try a product you may be promoting or a service you, you might be offering. So once uh, you actually know that what content marketing is, you might want to know actually what it really involves. What, what are the areas it actually covers? So which brings me to my next slide. Uh, uh, before that, I, I'd like to show you uh, uh, an interesting stat. Over 409 million people view more than 20 billion pages each month on WordPress.com. And you know, WordPress.com is a single site. So imagine there are thousands of sites um, and uh, there are thousands of pages. Uh, there are millions of people. So this is a vast number, number of people and, and, and the pages over there. So if you write something, if you write it in the right way, there, there are chances that your, your content will be read, viewed by different people, and the product or something you're promoting uh, will get the right audience. So this is what uh, content marketing uh, actually covers. Uh, you may work with blog posts, website copies. There are videos you can actually upload on different places. Uh, apart from YouTube, there are also some other places like uh, Facebook also uh, had ways to upload videos and there are a lot of engagement on there. And you can do email marketing, webinars, podcasts, a lot of various, mm -hmm. social media and ad copies as well. These are the areas actually content marketing uh, actually covers. So if you actually want to get started with content marketing, what, what are the things you, you actually need to get started? And remember, you are working, uh, you are actually want to start content marketing in WordPress. So first of all, what you need to know, you need to have a working knowledge of WordPress. That might involve how to install a WordPress plugin, how to install WordPress, how to uh, how actually plugin works, these are the things uh, uh, you need to know in WordPress. And a passion for writing and creating content. You know, if you actually don't have the passion for writing may, uh, or uh, creating content, content marketing is not something you should be trying. So if you have the passion for writing or creating content, this is a particular thing you should be trying. And another thing you need, how actually internet works. Like uh, you want to, uh, you may want to know about how to host a website and some other thing related to website and WordPress, since WordPress is all about that. And uh, you know, since it is content, you have to optimize it for the search engine as well. So you, if you have a good knowledge on SEO, it would be it be better for you. Also. You need a, a sense of marketing. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, what is the sense of marketing? Uh, it can be like, you know, uh, your friend, you want to go to a place or try, some, try a new food. Uh, your friend doesn't know about it. So what you are actually doing, you, you are telling your friend about that particular food or a, or a place you want to go to. So with your words and the way you actually describe it, your, your friend is finally convinced uh, to try that food or uh, go to that place with you. This is the sense actually uh, you would need. And now uh, I'd like to talk about how you can come up with the content ideas. And this is what you actually need most, I would say. So there are a lot of things to uh, work with in WordPress uh, and you can generate ideas on actually. 
you can uh, yeah, you can cover what the score functionalities that people actually look for and essential WordPress plugin guides. There are a lot of plugins that a particular site actually needs. So uh, you can uh, generate content uh, on that as well. And there are some WordPress hacks that you can also cover. And people on WordPress or in different places facing a lot of problems, creating uh, tutorials and some other content, maybe a video, and solving those uh, problems through that would be wonderful. Uh, for them, and this is a great way and great, uh, 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 you know, uh, area to generate content on. And people always look for suggestions, tips and tricks, and product comparison uh, in in uh, in many ways. So you can if uh, you can cover those in in your content as well. You can write uh, reviews and uh, compare different products for people to try this way. So now that you know that what, what content you should be generating, that there are some certain ways that can help you uh, write content that, that finds its reader itself. Like uh, you are generating con content for people to read. So you need to find a way to, to reach those people. So I'm going to talk about that. So in a, in a, let's say you are uh, writing a blog on a particular topic. If you cover all the questions, uh, uh, people might ask on that. That would be wonderful. So those people don't need to go somewhere else to find those answers. Uh, so it's better if you cover all relevant questions uh, in, in that particular content. It may be a video or a blog post. And it's wonderful to optimize your content with a WordPress, plug WordPress SEO plugin. There are a lot of options for you. And you can, uh, you can optimize your content with that if you're writing a blog. And interestingly, most people don't do that. So it's, if you actually optimize your content according to a WordPress SEO plugin, I think that you will be ahead of a lot of people out there. So I, I would recommend that you do this for your, for your content. So, and, and a lot of pe people worry about how the length should be. And if you are creating a video, how the length should be, if you are creating a a uh, particular blog post, your, uh, you know, people worry, how, how long should I write? Uh, how, how many words should be there? I think you should not worry about that. It's better you actually think about, think about the content itself and let the content dictate the length. And what I usually do uh, before writing a content, I actually search, search in, uh, on internet on that particular topic and read some relevant blog post and that that give, gives me a lot of ideas what I should be working with and uh, just just remember one thing you, you are writing something and that is already there on the internet so why are you are writing it I think you you shouldn't write it, write it at all if if we if you cannot offer something that is not on the internet uh, and that that is something that is uh, not covering somewhere I think you shouldn't be writing. So this is why, if uh, it's better you you read relevant blog post or watch relevant videos and try to outrank them. Try to try to make it something better. Try to include more relevant content, more relevant information to it, so that people finally find it helpful. And there is one trick I usually follow: outline content and search for the smaller chunks. You know. While writing a blog post or uh, making a video, you might be uh, searching on internet with the title you are actually writing on. It's better if you outline that content and you know uh, search for the smaller chunks. This way, you'll find more information and make your content richer. So, uh, at this part of part, I think uh, once you have written it in a better way you need to promote your content. So how can you do that? First thing you need to do, you need to share your content on social media and make sure you use relevant tags. So what people usually do, people use random tags, what this uh, content is covered. The tags are for particular purposes, like uh, people on internet are looking for those keywords on social media. And if you use those tags, 
then your content will appear and they will find it. And there are a lot of websites uh, that already cover your topic, in a, maybe in a different, uh, different way. So your content might add some value to their content as well. So if you can actually reach out to them and ask for them to recommend your content, this way you'll find relevant audience. People will come to your, to your website and read it. Also, there are influencers in your niche. You can actually ask them to share your content as well with their audience. So if you can reach out to them uh, on their social media profile, there would be some emails out there for, for you to reach out to them. Uh, in most cases, they do. So uh, if you can do that, that would be wonderful for you. While creating content, you might cover relevant plugins or themes as well. So if, if a company sees that uh, yeah, their plugin is, is being covered in a particular blog post or a video, and they might be interested to share that as well. So you can reach out to the companies uh, to, to uh, share your content as well. So. When you, you have done all these things, there is one thing that you, you have to manage your content workflow. So how actually you can do that? So I use, what I usually do, I, 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 I segmented this flow in some, some sections, like the ideas in progress, in review, done and published. This is the way I, I used to work. I think you, you can follow this as well. Whenever you get a new idea, you can actually, content idea, you, you can actually put those in, in the column of ideas and you can work for later. And if a particular idea you are working on, you can put them in the, in the progress column and then in review done this this way you can actually uh, be in touch with uh, everything that is happening and you can see what you have done before and it, it uh, it's a flow that that actually uh, sets things up for you and you you won't be actually uh, off the track so I also what uh, I also do I I manage my content and I follow a content calendar. Let's say you have a lot of content and you actually, when you are generating the ideas, you don't know when you can actually publish those. And if you don't have a particular calendar to follow, what you'll be confused when to, when to, uh, when to publish those articles, when to publish, publish those videos. And, uh, if you have a content calendar, you can actually schedule those uh, according to uh, according to the dates and publish those. And if you have different team members, uh, you can actually include theirs as well. So this way, you uh, you can you will not be confused about the about the public publishing dates, and you you can you can actually follow a, follow a flow of the content. So this is uh, how we can actually um, uh, follow a cal content calendar and uh, get things ready. So I think that uh, I have come to the conclusion. So this part I would be asking, you know, uh, uh, wishing that you ask me some questions if you have any, and I, I'd, I'd love to answer. <laughs>